Hello and welcome back everyone we weeb online and today I'm going to start a new series what if Itachi was Naruto's brother part 1 if you enjoy this video please give it a big thumbs up and watch more videos like this subscribe to my channel and turn that bell notification on so you never miss an upload now wasting no more time let's begin Naruto had faith in stories myths and even legends in the beginning of time in the chakra fruit and in Hagoromo Otsutsuki also known as the sage of the six paths it wasn't even a stretch to think about reincarnation because asura had willed her to be born that way no those kinds of things didn't bother her anymore it didn't matter that she was reborn in a baby's body anymore she blinked her doe eyes let out a happy gurgle and grabbed the soft finger it was a soft voice that asked who is my cute daughter the voice softened when it saw her daughter she tried to speak but her vocal cords weren't fully developed yet so all she could do was make up words her mother laughed happily anyway even though that was the case naruko squealed with delight as her lovely mother tickled her little feet the room was filled with her laughter and she tried to run away but her small body wouldn't let her still she thought what was happening to her was very strange but she couldn't help but feel like it was all too familiar it's her mother this room and even the strange sign She was sure she had seen it somewhere before, but where? Hey, it was her second meeting with the man who said he was her father. His eyes were fixed on his daughter. His daughter looked back at him with blue eyes, eyes that made him think of Minato Namikaze a lot. He couldn't get rid of the little bit of doubt that was in his eyes. He looked his wife straight in the eyes, and her defiant eyes begged him to say something stupid. With a sigh, he kissed his wife on the forehead, and then he kissed his daughter. I'm not doubting you, but it's a strange concept for any Uchiha, Makoto. His wife said, "Yes. I don't blame you, Anata, but that doesn't mean that I will forgive you if you ever doubt me. I have always been faithful to you." Fugaku had a soft spot for his daughter. Not much of a stretch to see how much he looked like Makoto in the child. He had nothing to worry about. The man's wife was and will always be true to him. What a twist. A Uchiha with blue eyes. Hey, Naruko pouted in her crib and looked at the Uchiha symbol with dislike. Being born again as a Uchiha. It makes sense that she felt like she knew something. She didn't seem to be having any luck right now. If Sasuke Teme had seen her now, he would have laughed so hard he would have choked. She closed her eyes. Sasuke. She stood up straight, grabbed the wooden bars for support, and pushed herself up on her legs. Would her best friend also come back to life? She had a lot of questions, but no answers that made her feel better. Nariko Chan, are you who Nariko? Her mom asked as she walked in the room. The milk bottle almost fell over. Her daughter, who was 6 months old, was already trying to walk. Nariko squeaked with surprise when her mother walked up to her and cooed at her brazen daughter. "You're so cute, Ko Chan." The girl who had been reborn wouldn't say it, but she loved her new mother very much. The loving way she looked at her That didn't mean she had forgotten about her mom and dad. She would always remember the good times she had with her parents. That being said, it would be mean to ignore her new parents. Naruko could also be selfish once in a while. She had helped a lot of people, and now it was time for her to do something just for herself. She had every right to want her parents' love. Hey, she got tired of hearing Kurama in her head at times. It was strange for her to not hear that annoying voice in her head. She was sad. Karama was one of the most important people in her life, a wonderful friend. Now, there was only a creepy silence around her. She felt so naked without her furry friend. She closed her eyes, sighed, and huddled closer to her worried mother. In life, nothing was given for free. This was something Naruko learned very early in life. Hey, her mom told her, "You can do it, Ko-chan." Her new name was now what she called people. Naruko, Ko-chan. The people who used to raise her called her Naruko. The name Naruko was given to her by her new parents. The only thing that made her happy was that the names were alike. If that wasn't the case, it would have hurt. Her weak body was supported by her wobbly legs. She didn't give up, though. Her whole life, she had hated one thing more than anything else. Giving up. That wasn't in her last nindo, and it won't be in this one either. She walked up to her mom while sticking out her tongue. Ka-chan. Makoto went cold. 
but that went away quickly, and she picked up her daughter and spun her around. The Uchiha home was full of laughter. Hey! Fugaku decided that his wife didn't like being smug. Ko-chan, can you repeat what you said? Nariko smiled and said, Ka-chan, Ka-chan. While stroking her daughter's black hair, Makoto smiled and said, I told you so. He laughed and shook his head in amusement. His lovely wife was still a little naughty. Hey! When her mother took Nariko outside for the first time, she couldn't say a word. On the Hokage Mountain, her sharp eyes had seen not eight, but three heads. In other words, she had been born again and sent back in time, with her knowing ahead of time. When she thought about her old parents, it hurt her eyes. Were they still alive? Do they have another daughter whose name is Naruko? Would they make it this time? She took a deep breath and rubbed her eyes. Ko-chan, are you okay? Her mother asked as she stroked her cheek. Tu chan and Ka-chan not go. When Makoto looked at her, she said, Of course we won't go, sweetie, never. And Nariko held that promise very dear to her heart. The people she just met wouldn't leave her. Her old parents were not going to die. She swore by her name as a Namikaze, an Uzumaki, and a Uchiha who had just been baptized. Hey, one year, it didn't seem like it. Since her last revelation, Nariko has been working out her weak body. She would be ready this time. She is at peace right now, and not even Obito or Madara could take it away. Do push-ups or walk around the house or garden. Nariko went as far as she could. No, even more than that. She did some sit-ups one day when her dad caught her red-handed. Nariko. She frowned and walked straight toward her dad with a fiery determination. Ko-chan ninja. Fugaku had no idea that his first child and the heir to the Uchiha clan would be so smart. He got scared sometimes when he saw how smart his daughter's blue eyes were. You want to become a Kunoichi? Why? But that didn't mean he was afraid of his own blood and flesh. He just thought that kids would be different. In any case, this was a great chance for him to show everyone what the Uchiha clan could do. The Uchiha clan was and will remain the strongest in Konoha, and everyone in the village knew it. It was so bad that even the Senju clan was about to die out. No, it should be the whole shinobi nations. It was very serious when Nariko said, protect Tu Chan and Ka Chan. The fox blinked his eyes. When you said that, his lips curled up. Yukio was right. Their daughter was really cute. How about I help you with your training? Nariko gave a head nod. Hey. The two of them were training their two-year-old daughter, and Makoto shook her head. She laughed out loud again when Nariko tripped and fell on her behind. She was adamantly against it at first. Then she saw how determined her daughter could be. She thought it would be safer to train with Fugaku instead of by herself because even scolding her didn't help. That's what Fugaku said. Get up, Nariko. The matriarch of the Uchiha clan shook her head. Two people in her life were very stubborn. Must be from Fugaku's side, she said in a soft voice. She kept looking at them with soft eyes and thanked Kami for giving her a good life. Hey! Fugaku let out a tired sigh as he walked into his house. Since he last saw his wife and child six months ago, he had been very tired. Six months of complete chaos and killing. As of now, the Third Shinobi World War didn't look like it would end. He spoke softly, to Daima, and soon after, soft footsteps came after him. When he saw his daughter, she hugged him tightly and there were tears running down her cheeks. Okari, Tu Chan. Makoto came after them, and her eyes lit up when she saw them. When he saw how big her stomach was, his eyes almost popped out. How long? He asked loudly as he put his hands on her stomach. I'm almost due. He laughed out loud and wrapped his arms around his wife. I love you. Hey, Tu Chan, I want to enter the Akka. This made Fugaku look at his daughter with confused eyes. Why did she stop talking? A loud voice screamed, Makoto, he writhed. That woman could be really loud. Kashina, she is not here. The woman stopped and looked at him and then at his daughter. Nani, I didn't know that Makoto had a daughter. It was Fugaku's wish to hit his head against a wall. Kashina can be very dense at times. His daughter was almost three years old. She knelt down and looked at the little girl. I see you're still as grumpy as ever. Now, who do we have here? Took a deep breath and looked at her mother, who was still alive. 
Her mom. She moved forward and reached out. Beautiful. She felt her eyes get bigger when she looked at Makoto's child. Those eyes. The eyes of Minato. She took a deep breath. W what's your name, Tabane? Fugaku didn't say anything because he knew she was getting nervous. Nariko. That's a beautiful name. My name is Kashina. Nariko gave a weak nod, and she could feel tears in her eyes. She hugged her mom, even though it might have seemed odd for her to do so. Ramen. She was at ease. She felt like this was where she should be. The two adults didn't say anything when they saw her shed silent tears. For some things, it was better not to answer. She gave Kashina a hug and looked at Fugaku with doubt in her eyes. Why did that kid look at her with such love and longing? She wasn't going to say it, but that look scared her. Hey. Seeing her mother leave had hurt. She tried to help but failed. Getting stronger and keeping her alive, along with all the important people in her life. Her determination grew stronger, which is why her father sent her to the academy when she was only four years old. Her mother wasn't happy, but she let it happen because she saw how stubborn her daughter was. Makoto could not keep anything from her daughter. The only thing she hoped for was that her daughter would always be as lovely and friendly as she was. As a mother, that was all she wanted. Nariko was thrilled. There had never been a genin younger than her, she was better than Kakashi Sensei. It would be priceless to see how he felt. She laughed softly as she read a book about the human body. In her past life, she was a fierce attacker who was famous for her amazing ninjutsu skills. This time, she wanted to learn more jutsu moves and improve her skills. Hanatsu sensei asked Nariko, are you reading again? With annoyance? No, see you after class, her teacher told her, shaking his head. Nariko took a deep breath and put down her book. It had only been two days, but she already caused trouble. Her dad is going to kill her. Hey. Your daughter has shown to have an IQ of 200 and above. Miyoto and Fugaku both looked shocked. She has passed all the replacement tests, scoring a bit lower on Taijutsu. But that's normal considering she's only four. What are her options? Asked the head of the Uchiha clan. The parents were looked at by Hinatsu sensei. This means that she can graduate at the sheer age of four, marking her as the youngest genin in history but there will be consequences seeing that no Junin would want to take her as a student. Someone with an old, authoritative voice said, I might know how to help her. In shock, the three of them said, Hokage-sama. Hey. Nariko smiled big as she put her forehead protector around her waist and said, Ha, huh? beat that scarecrow. She should have worn it around her forehead, but it kept falling off. She was so great that she beat her sensei by a year. When she found out who her sensei would be, she became very excited. The red hot blooded habanero would teach her how to do things. She hasn't been able to sit still since her parents told her that news. It was either training or coming out from behind the books. Ka Chan, I'm leaving. Be safe. Ko Ch, her mother said, but the sound of breaking glass cut her off. Nariko ran to her mother because she was scared. Ka Chan, she said, but her voice was shaking as she stared at her shocked mother. My water broke. It didn't take Nariko long to run outside and scream, Ka-chan's water broke, as loudly as she could. Not long after that, three Uchiha broke into their house and took Makoto to the hospital. At that point, Fugaku, who was very upset and couldn't stop pacing, joined Nariko. Tu chan don't worry, Ka-chan is strong. The words his daughter used to calm him made Fugaku laugh, she was making him feel better. What a weird kid. But Fugaku wouldn't have it any other way. Hey. Soon, the family of three got a fourth member. The birth didn't take long. Fugaku smiled softly at his new son and said, Itachi. Uchiha Itachi. Itachi, I like the sound of that, Makoto said as she gently held her son's head. Nariko could only blink her eyes in shock. The Itachi Uchiha. In history, there was one Itachi, and the name of him brought pain and death. What did her tired mother say? Ko Chan, would you like to hold your brother? The reborn Uzumaki took a quiet swallow, trying to block out the image of a 13 year old boy who kills people. H. Hi. It became clear to Fugaku that his daughter was shaking. He thought, that's strange. He needs to talk to his daughter about it. Hey. Nariko promised to protect her brother's innocence and kill anyone who got too close to him being too nice. 
Not like the last time, there will be no Uchiha massacre. She will become Hokage, and the Uchiha clan will do well. Kashina asked softly, What are your dreams? She was confused about why this girl was looking at her with such longing and love. Nariko gave a soft smile, My dream is no dream. I will protect my precious people and become the first female Hokage. Kashina held her breath as she looked at the little girl, who seemed ready to do anything. The fire will. It was clear to her that this girl would become a well-known and feared figure in the shinobi nations. Plus, this girl made her think of herself a lot. That could have been why she asked the Hokage to be her teacher. That's nice to know Gaki, but first you have to get through me to become Hokage. I don't think that'd be too hard, Nariko said with a sly grin. She crossed her fingers and yelled, Sexy no jutsu. The image of the innocent Jenin was switched with that of a certain Junin with blonde hair and blue eyes. Not dressed. Kashina blinked her eyes and screamed, Nani? She held her nose open as blood poured out. You little she-devil, come here. When the picture of a naked Minato went away, the blue-eyed Jenin laughed and spun away from him. Hey! Now, Ko-chan, pay attention, Fuinjutsu isn't easy to do, Nani, how did you do that? Kashina screamed in shock. Nariko smiled big and showed off the storage seal she had just made. I learned from a book. B but. A storage seal isn't that easy Nani, you are a monster. Said Uchiha laughed and showed off another seal that was going to blow. This one was a bit difficult, but still doable. Kashina made a face. It's no fun teaching a prodigy. Kashina was upset, so Nariko told her, There, there, sensei. You can still teach me many things. The red-haired Junin sniffed and said, True, let's move on to ninju Nariko. I'll kill you. She ran after the little girl after seeing the seals for a winjutsu. Hey, Kashina said, eyes darting left and right, Fugaku, you have made a monster. HN? She smiled broadly and said, Kashina-chan, it's nice to see you again. Miko-chan. You can't believe how much I missed you, your daughter is driving me crazy, she almost cried out loud. Fugaku dripped with sweat. Kashina had been upset for two days. Makoto tried to calm her down by saying, it hasn't been that bad. Kashina threw her hands up and shook her head, I'm running out of teaching material. Fugaku tensed up and said, that's not possible. Yet it is. Did you teach her Fuinjutsu or Irio Ninjutsu? No, Fugaku answered. Are you implying that Nariko is capable of using both skills? That's what I said, you grumpy Uchiha. Kashina pulled back her red hair. She turned away from Fugaku, who crossed his arms over her chest and said, I want to see it with my own eyes. Hey, Fugaku and Makoto couldn't say anything. They thought their daughter might be very smart, but this was way beyond what they could have imagined not even by Uchiha's standards. Even though Fugaku was proud, he knew that his daughter would kill anyone who dared to say bad things about the Uchiha family. Kashina asked the amazing child, Nariko-chan, who taught you all these jutsus? It's possible that Nariko did too much. With a shrug, she told her the truth. I read a lot. It wasn't a lie, but it wasn't the truth either. Little white lies. She still couldn't tell them the whole truth, they would send her right away to the Konoha's torture and interrogation force. Being born again and sent back in time, who would believe her? Makoto asked her daughter softly as she stroked her cheek, can you tell us what else you have read? She thought her daughter was going to do something that would be too much for her. Nariko began to summarize everything she knew. And each jutsu made her father feel better about himself and fed his ego. The two women were also shocked. Hey! Nariko met her first father and sensei when she was five years old. Minato laughed and said, I heard that you're giving Kashina a lot of trouble. She asked him, you mean from Kashina Aero sensei? Without noticing that he was stuttering. Kakashi, who is always so serious, even cracked a smile. I'll act like I didn't hear that, Minato said as he rubbed his forehead. She said with all the seriousness she could muster, pretend all you want, but the truth is that she is a pervert and likes looking at your body. The soon-to-be Yandaimi coughed loudly as his cheeks burned. Nariko said, you must be Kakashi. I beat your record by one year. Does it seem like I care? The blonde man was still choking, but she ignored him and said, you should. 
because I set my eyes on you, Scarecrow. Kakashi's eyebrow moved, what did you call me? Don't you like your new name, Scarecrow? He asked. She gave him a mean grin and enjoyed his angry look. It was too much fun to tie people up. In her last life, she hadn't had so much fun. Nariko. She ran like crazy after saying, uh oh, time to run. By Yellow Chan and Scarecrow. Kashina stopped in front of them and blew his nose like a bull. Not attractive at all. Where did that demon child go to? The left was shown by two fingers. Hey, she yelled, come here, you little brat. Make me, Arrow Sensei, Nariko stuck out her tongue. Stop calling me that. The demon Uchiha yelled, make me again, and laughed as she slipped out of Kashina's grasp. She would die from being squeezed. The fiery redhead sprang out and shot golden chains at the screaming girl. Nariko began to run toward the Uchiha compound, yelling, not the chains. You pervert. I'm not into those kind of things, Aero sensei Kashina was following her closely, but she didn't know where her cute kohai was taking her. She saw red in the body of a certain Uchiha. Makoto didn't tell her she was wrong for hurting her cute daughter. She was sure of it. Help! Kashina Aero sensei wants to kill me, I'm not into chains and whips. When a hundred pairs of black eyes locked on Kashina, she stopped moving. She grabbed her red hair and shook her head nervily. T this isn't what it looks like, to Bane. Then tell me, what does it look like when the Uchiha heir is being chased by a crazy red-haired woman with chains who is screaming pervert? Asked an older Uchiha woman. Nariko spoke up, Oba-chan, Kashina-sensei and I were training. Don't worry, she smiled broadly and saw that they were all calm, including Kashina, who asked, Nay sensei weren't we going to stop by Ka-chan's house and have lunch? H. Hi. No more words were spoken as she walked toward her goal, her stomach grumbling the whole way. Demon child, Kashina whispered somewhere in the background. Hey, Kai-chan. You can do it. Itachi stumbled over to her big sister and smiled widely, Kone-chan. That's it, you're almost there. Had it been a year and a half already? Without a doubt, time went by very quickly. Her parents were always perfect, her little brother was growing up without having to take care of an heir, and her lessons from Uzumaki Kashina were beginning to pay off. Five years. She was five years old. She is also known as Jenin Uchiha Nariko of Konohagakure. All of her training was paying off, she had made the Uchiha's reputation much better, and she hadn't seen any bad intentions from people in her clan. This time, there would be no coup d'etat, no trouble in the Uchiha compound, and no killings. When her brother laughed softly and hugged her tightly, her eyes got softer. Don't worry, Kai-chan, I'll protect you with my life. Hey! Jenin Uchiha Nariko against Jenin Uchiha Shisui, start! Nariko had never met the curly Uchiha before, he had good things said about him by the Itachi in her time. This shinobi was known for being fast and willing to give up their life. He didn't give in to the curse of hatred because he was kind and didn't want to hurt anyone. One of the few. Blue and Onyx Black locked together. Kashina yelled, kick his ass or I'll kick yours, brat. This time, her boyfriend, who was trying to calm her down, didn't pay attention to her. Nariko shivered and didn't pay attention to Shisui's muffled laughter. She ran straight at him without saying a word. She was going to show them all what she could do this time. She dove out of the way of his punch and tried to knock him down, but she couldn't. Shisui did a somersault and grabbed her collar, throwing her off balance. It made a sandstorm when she sent Chakra to her legs and skidded to a stop. That was great, she could use it to protect herself from her next attacks. She started making signs and running in circles while her feet were on the ground while laughing to herself. Shisui had no idea what hit him. He showed up above her before she could touch her last mark. Since she started out young, her reflexes were even better in this body than in the last one. She could see why people called him Shunshin no Shisui, he was very fast. Futon. Repusho. She clapped her hands together to call up compressed wind, which she then sent at her enemy. He saw stars and quickly thought of what to do. He shot his ninja wire to the left, got it stuck in the ground, and pulled it out. He flickered toward her, determined to win this fight, even though his hands were hurting. He smiled as he grabbed her tiny fist and said, not bad for a chipmunk. Nariko thanked her and said, not bad for a poodle. 
He laughed quietly at what she said, she took a step back and threw a mean punch at his kidney, saying, I think I'm starting to like you. The next fight was one of the most stressful for the little Uchiha heir. Even though she punched and kicked, they all missed. I hate how weak and small she is. He grabbed her hand and spun her around so that her back was to him. Unluckily for you, your speed is slower than mine right now, he said. Cold steel hit her throat, and she froze. His words weren't meant to irritate her, they were just facts. She smiled at the fast Uchiha and said, Unfortunately for you, your skills are below mine. A blue barrier went around them. Shisui let out a gasp and fell to his knees, he couldn't believe how heavy his body felt. Like. He was being crushed by gravity. He looked at the Uchiha girl and almost choked on his spit. Gravitation is ten times stronger inside this chakra barrier, she said with a smile that curled her lips up. It's not affecting me because I keyed it into my barrier with my blood, which gives me free reign inside the barrier. She turned around and picked up his broken kanai. She put her kanai against his throat as if to make fun of him and said, Now, forfeit. A sad face showed that he gave up, I forfeit. Then her happy self came back, and her barrier fell away with it. He was interested and asked, How did you turn off the barrier? She smiled big and put out her hand to help him stand up. That's a secret. That was a great fight, Shisui. Let's do it again another time. With a big smile, he said, sure, and the winner is Jenna Uchiha Nariko. Hey, says Uchiha Shisui, age, 7. Graduation. 6 years old as of now, they are Chunin. They reached the rank of Jenin when they were 7 years old. Belongs to the Uchiha clan in Konohagakure, Uchiha Nariko. Age. 5 Graduation. 4 years old, achieved the rank of Jenin when he was 4 years old, currently a Chunin. Belongs to the Uchiha clan in Konohagakure Hei. Gigi. Team 7 needs my help, Nariko scowled at the old man. Hiruzen said in a cold voice, you will do what I say, Chunin Nariko. Don't make me knock you down to Jenin rank. She could feel tears coming to her eyes, and she turned away and ran. She didn't want to leave her future sensei and his teammates, so he left her with no choice. They had to have her. Her future was tied to everyone else's. Kashina's voice came from behind her and said, Nariko, get your behind back here, kid. She stopped and looked at her sensei and one of the people she cared about. What? Even though she knew she was being unfair to her sensei, the stress she was feeling was getting worse every day. The fear had set in, and she was going crazy from all the things she had to change to make the future better. This was crazy. Things in her life could not get worse. Kashina looked at her. Watch your tongue, Nariko. I haven't taught you to be an impolite and childish kunoichi. You're better than this. Nodding, she said, I'm sorry sensei, it's just this war. It's making me tired. Gentler, I know Nariko. How about we grab something to eat while I discuss the next mission with you? She quietly nodded and followed her strange sensei, making plans in her mind as she did so. Hey. Sensei, you're amazing. I love you. Nariko screamed with joy as she gave her a huge hug. As Minato walked into the Ichiraku stand, he made a joke, Nariko, don't go stealing my girlfriend. After him came Kakashi, then Obito, and finally Rin. Don't worry, Minato sensei, there's enough Kashina for both of us, the Uchiha heir said with a big smile and wriggling eyebrows. Minato turned a bright cherry red, Kashina tried to hit her head, and Kakashi glared at the Uchiha kid. Obito laughed out loud, Ko-chan, you're absolutely amazing. Rin looked at the two of them with a defeated expression on her face. Nariko thought that things were getting better in her life. Hey. She gave the kid with silver hair a mean look, you're stupid Bakashi. Don't call me that, you perverted Uchiha. It's funny that her perverted sensei called her that. Her eyes widened, I reckon that you'd become an even bigger pervert than me, reading porn during daylight. He made fun of her by pointing his finger at his other teammate and saying, that'll be the day you and that idiot over there activate your Sharingan. There were times when Kashina had to hold her back with her chains. It happened sometimes that Minato had to teleport his cocky student away very quickly. On some days, Nariko and Obito worked together to beat the Scarecrow. Those days were unfortunately few and far between. Nariko called out, Obito, Formation B, with her teeth clenched. 
Activate Seal MLM 4.3. The boy from Uchiha pulled out four seals and threw them at the possible copycat. Seals check. They didn't have time to do anything because Kakashi jumped away. He was shocked when a long, blue branch shot at him and curled around his ankle. He used a kanai to try to cut it off, but it didn't work. He screamed when the tendril pulled him toward the wall. Like hell, I'll let you too. He used his famous chakra blade to cut the tendril in half with white chakra. He flipped backwards and avoided Obito's punch to the midriff while cheering to himself inside. He dodged Noriko's glowing touch, which could have killed him, and another roundhouse kick from dead last number one. Even when you combine all your efforts, it doesn't change a single thing. Two idiots fighting together will become a pair of idiots. Obito glared at him, and Noriko said with a scowl, how about we beat that stupid face of yours? Noriko then smiled and said, Obito, it's time to use our secret move. You mean? His eyes got really big when she said yes. She smirked meanly and punched her palm, saying, time to beat that scarecrow off the road. Obito did the same thing she did. Kakashi just stood there and looked at them warily. This time, only Kami knew what they were doing. Harem no jutsu. They all yelled at the same time. Clouds of smoke appeared everywhere, and when the smoke cleared, Kakashi saw naked women. Everyone was looking at him with sinful eyes and flesh. He took a deep breath and tried to get away. A passionate moan went up, Kakashi-kun, we want you. When they grabbed him and pushed their soft bodies against him, Kakashi felt sick. It was too much. He was sick to his stomach and dizzy. He turned to the side and threw up right away, on one of the women, but he didn't care. Eu. Bakashi, you freak, Obito's voice echoed through the clearing, and Noriko laughed out loud while holding her side. Makoto knew that her daughter would have to go to war one day, but knowing about it and seeing it for yourself were two different things. It hurt her eyes. Ka-chan, Noriko's worried voice came over. Her lips were shaking. Nothing will happen, Ka-chan. Tears fell. One by one. At only six years old, her little girl was going to fight in a war. Six, Kami. What kind of mom did she have? Ka-chan, Noriko said softly. Nothing will happen to me. Kashina sensei is there, along with Kakashi, Obito and Rin. Even Minato sensei will be there for a short period of time. Makoto nodded and tried not to cry again. Her hands were shaking as she grabbed Noriko's and said, promise me that you'll come back to me. I promise. Ka Chan. Noriko dried her tears and helped her stand up. We will end this war. Don't go. Kone Chan yelled as he quickly followed with his loud words. The two female Uchihas couldn't say anything after the normally quiet boy yelled. He ran up to her and gave her a tight hug, not letting go. I promise that I'll be back, little one. Itachi got stiff, his eyes turned red, and his cheeks swelled up. You promise? She said yes. And once Nei Chan promises something, she will make it happen. Isn't that true, Squirt? He moved his head back and forth. She hesitated. Then I was even more sure. When his big sister said she would do something, she always did it. Itachi was sure that his sister would keep his promise. You'll come back. Yes, of course. I still have a lot to teach you, Noriko told the unsure boy. And bat off a lot of girls. And embarrass you in front of your girlfriend. Itachi turned red in the face, his sister was so weird sometimes. He let out a loud squeal when strong arms grabbed him and spun him around. He couldn't hold back the silly laughter that came out of his mouth. Hey. Makoto gave the dishes a good wash, she wasn't going to think about it, her daughter was going to come back. Itachi was reading a book that Noriko had given to him for his birthday next to her. The story of the very brave ninja. It would be an understatement to say she was shocked when Noriko bought. The book was great for her son. He could never take his eyes off of that book of him. She hoped he wouldn't look at any of Jiraiya's other books. Hey. Rin made a face. She looked over at the Uchiha heir. She didn't feel bad about the girl. In fact, she liked the little Kunoichi. But something didn't seem right about her. That is, those eyes of hers. Is she talking to a six-year-old girl or an adult? That was sometimes the question she had. Bakashi. Take that back, you stupid scarecrow. Rin let out a sigh. There were also times when she was sure Noriko was still six years old. 
Hey! Kakashi gave the Uchiha kid a mean look. He wanted to beat up the girl ever since he met her, he knew she wasn't like other people. That is clear to everyone, even blind people. He wasn't surprised when she became close with Obito, they did say that like-minded people tend to stick together. The beast child screamed, Bakashi, stop bothering Obito. He raised his chin and looked down at her poor body with disgust, didn't know that you were his official babysitter. Oi, bastard, Ko-chan and I will pulverize you. Kakashi grabbed Obito by the collar and threw him to the side. When Noriko tried to grab him, he punched her in the gut instead. He cut off the stupid pair's heads in less than two seconds. What a shame. How did you become Chunin? He asked, narrowing his eyes on Obito. You're even less valuable than this freak, he growled. Minato and Kashina came out of the forest, glared at what they saw, and groaned in anger. All at once. She could only shrug her shoulder and hope that the mission was over. She wasn't sure how Noriko would change the team that much. Hey. Noriko couldn't take her eyes off of Kakashi's back. She spat out, you're even worse than the Teme. She was ignored by Kakashi. She became more angry, and so did her calm. Who would have thought that her sensei would be so cruel and heartless? Going from being a stiff jerk to a lazy, perverted jerk. Even though she tried many times, she couldn't connect those traits to the same person. There was no way to make sense of why he had changed so much. But that didn't let him treat everyone badly. People who break the rules are trash, but people who leave their friends are worse than trash. Those words would always be in her mind. Obito said those words, which Kakashi used. But it hurt to see him like this. She missed her big brother Kakashi. Hey! As the Kanais came at Noriko, she stiffened up and dove to avoid them. She heard Rin call out Obito's name next to her. She locked her eyes on his shape because she was scared, which was her first mistake. One hit her in the arm. She was able to avoid all of them. As a medic, you had to avoid every bullet that was thrown at you. That was Tsunade's most important rule for all medic nin. As a team, Minato and Kashina were fighting four shinobi, two on each side. Kakashi was taking care of himself well. For a junin. Rin was taking care of Obito while he was hurt. A long-legged shinobi fought her while she growled. He looked dangerous with his eyes. Since when did Konoha start sending out babies to the battlefield? He said. Watch how this baby will punch you to a bloody pulp. He laughed and said, don't get your hopes up, squirt. She dodged and evaded his punches and kicks by moving like a snake. Things she was waiting for were taking too long for him to wait. When her anger showed up, that's when she would strike. That's how Sasuke liked to fight. Get your enemy angry and then hit them when they had no control left. Kakashi liked it too. Noriko closed her eyes. Once, twice. The person who was after her said, Ah, it finally kicked in. She couldn't see because it was blurry. She felt dizzy all of a sudden. She felt sick all over. W hat? P-O-I-S on. The Kusanin laughed really hard. The moment that Kanai nicked your arm. It was coated in poison. One of the most potent poison in whole Kusagakir. Noriko swore at her bad luck. Kakashi was protecting her from two more enemy ninjas, and Rin and Obito were back on the battlefield with their parents. Her chances of being saved were very low. It wasn't fair. Why was she always the one who had to deal with poison-filled weapons? The Demon Brothers had used poison on her during her wave mission as well. Once more. She didn't have Kurama to save her this time. The only thing she knew about medicine was how to treat small wounds, so there was no way she could get the poison out, she wasn't as smart as Sakura, still. It was too bad that time was running out. When the man showed up in front of her, she just barely sidestepped him. You're boring. He showed up in front of her again and hit her in the stomach with his fist. She was thrown against a tree and fell apart like a bag of potatoes. Her hands were shaking. It was hard to see. She threw up and bile came up from her throat. Not strong. Without Karama, she was so weak. The fox saved her behind every time she was poisoned, stabbed, or hit with a fully charged Chidori. She didn't think it would be such a big help. The man walked up to her and grabbed her throat, squeezing it. His grip got tighter as he said, pitiful. You should have let the adults fight for you. Her eyes were filled with black dots, and she choked on her tears and spit. Then Itachi's promise came back to her quickly, 
She promised to keep everyone safe, her promise to stop the Uchiha massacre. Not at all. Not at all. She didn't want to die. Not right now. She had to do a lot of things. She jerked her fingers toward her seal pouch and took out her gravity seal while her fingers were shaking. She quickly slapped the seal on the man and watched with silent joy as he screamed from the sudden pressure. He didn't think much of her because he thought she was weak. She fell to the ground and bawled loudly and hard without his help. As darkness fell on her, she thought, it's so cold. Hey. Obito had seen a lot of strange things. He had met many strange people. This was shown by Guy. But Noriko was better than everything else. She was the very definition of weird. She was really strange. Still, she became his best friend. It's crazy that a six-year-old girl was his best friend. He wasn't embarrassed by that at all. Not any longer. She was better than Rin sometimes. He almost didn't believe it himself. That is, she helped him train and healed his wounds as well as she could. Having extra food was a plus. The best thing about her was that she fought for him not Kakashi. Something Rin had never done before. He wasn't blind, but she was always fair. She loved Kakashi, he could see that. Outside of his mind, he spat out, he will always be a good friend. It was painful. He got through it with Noriko's help, over and over again. It didn't take long to decide between Rin and Noriko. He would never give up on Rin, though, he would keep trying until she told him not to. He snapped out of his thoughts and blocked the kanai with his own. When Obito got angry, he spat, you'll regret attacking us. Shut her trap, moron. Are ya blind and stupid? It's nine against six. He let go of his kanai and dove, which made the man trip and fall forward. Obito grabbed his legs and pushed him up, making him hit the ground hard with his head. Not easy. In an instant, he stabbed the man in the head. He almost choked on the smell of blood when it reached his nose. He blinked to get rid of the sickness in his hands. It wasn't the right time to show weakness. He froze as he looked around. Around him, time seemed to move more slowly. Right then, his vision got better, and a sharp pain started to appear behind his eyes. Noriko. Hey. Team 7 and Kashina were kept on edge while Rin worked on Noriko, who was out of it. Kashina pulled her red hair back. This is my fault, Tama to Bane, I asked the Sandame to join your team. When Minato put his hand on Kashina's shoulder, he told her, you couldn't have known that we would be ambushed, it should have been clear of any enemy ninja. Obito sat down next to Rin and took Noriko's hands. That brat is way too stubborn to die. Noriko's eyes flew open, and she let out a painful groan. Bakae she. The boy who had been insulted gave everyone a mean look and said, I told you so. Hey. Noriko sulked, and a cloud of bad luck hung over her. Not fair. Obito laughed and put his arm around her shoulder. Don't be so sad, Ko-chan. It's a great day. The flowers are blooming. It's autumn, Kakashi said in jest. He yelled angrily, no one asked you, Bakashi. Rin let out a frustrated sigh. Guys. No one wants to hear your pathetic story of how your Sharingan activated for the 16th time. Noriko pouted even more. Minato and Kashina could only laugh with amusement. They had been waiting for Noriko to get better for a week now. Rin's skill as a medic nin made her lucky. Obito's Sharingan was the only good thing that came out of that fight. After wanting it for a long time, he finally turned it on. Hey. The father saw his daughter. When he saw how she was brought back, he tensed up and almost killed Kashina and Minato. Two Chan. Two tiny arms wrapped around him and hugged him. He let out a tired sigh. Noriko, are you hurt in any way? Her black bangs hit her cheeks as she shook her head. Sit down and tell me everything from the start. So, Noriko began at the beginning and went all the way to the end. At the same time, Fugaku listened with the patience of a parent. Noriko gave her dad a small smile. A lot of people might think he's tough, but she was the only one who could see how much he loved them. Hey. Makoto hummed a soft tune while she put her daughter's hair in braids. Are you hungry, dear? I wouldn't mind some chocolate cake. How about we bake one? Asked the Uchiha matriarch with a laugh. Noriko was excited and nodded. She then ran to the kitchen. She got up and smiled happily as she followed her daughter. When her daughter walked through the door, the weight in her heart went away. Hey. 
Shisui blinked his eyes in surprise as he knocked on the door. Shipmunk? Poodle. He smiled at how terrible she looked with white flour all over her face and clothes. What would Fugaku-sama say? His jaws dropped open when Fugaku walked up behind her, he also had flour on his face. Never in my life did I think, Shisui said and looked shocked. Come inside, the chocolate cake is almost done, Nariko laughed at the look on his face. That's how Shisui and Nariko became best friends, to the happiness of Fugaku and Makoto. Hey, come on Obito, we have to destroy that scarecrow. When Obito huffed, he fell to the ground and gasped for air. Nariko kept cheering him on as she did the same exercises as him. Think of the reward, Bakashi's defeat at your hands. Your key LLING me. The blue-eyed Uchiha didn't care about what he said and kept bothering him until he was begging on the ground. He tried again, I can't. Dear Kami, how are you alive? Nonsense. You will do all your sit-ups, push-ups and many more, just like Guy. Let the power of youth embrace you. Obito jumped up and screamed in shock. He took a deep breath and looked around. Just a bad dream, Obito. Nothing to worry about. Hey. I can't wait to have grandchildren. All running in the house, screaming that they want to become Hokage. Kashina laughed with pleasure. Slow down, Koto-chan. How am I supposed to catch up to you? She talked about grandchildren even though Kashina wasn't married yet not to mention having kids or grandchildren. When will you start a family with Minato? Makoto asked with a raised eyebrow. Shinko turned a bright red color, Miko T.O. That woman only laughed, and her laughter could be heard all through the house. Hey, he shook his head, he was aware that this would go badly. His sister picked him up and said, Kai-chan, come on, we need to be quiet. Shisui, who was nervously sweating to his left, said, maybe we shouldn't do this. The eyes of Obito and Nariko got very narrow as they looked at him. I am E and let's do th is. Yay, woohoo, I'm XITED. Itachi dripped with sweat, how did they get involved? So, Shisui will trap the bathroom with chalk seals and pink colored shampoos, Obito told us. Nariko said, Obito will do the kitchen and the toilet, make sure you won't forget this. The Sharingan user smiled meanly, his eyes shining. I'll make sure to write a nice card as well. Last but not least, Itachi and I will do his bedroom. Spawn a lot of copies of Icha Icha in his room and replace all his blue masks with pink ones. If I have time I'll decorate his entire bedroom with the color orange. Make sure you hide all evidence, use the antiseptic smell to confuse him. Shisui made a face. We're going to die. Itachi nodded in agreement and blushed a little when he talked about Jiraiya's adult books. Makoto and Nariko told him not to read it. He might not read it, though. After Obito and Nariko put their hands on top of each other, the other two did the same. Go Uchiha pranking team. Hey, he stopped right in his tracks. Kakashi, what happened to your apartment? The last Hitaki could only stare with their mouths open in shock. All of his chairs and table were stuck to the ceiling. His silverware was hung from the ceiling like a decoration. Something was written on a piece of paper. He could only see the letter, I, on it when he picked it up. He didn't pay attention to Minato's low laughter as he tore the piece of paper in his hand. People who broke into his house would be killed by him. Hey! Kakashi flushed the toilet, but it didn't work. He tried again, this time harder, because he was confused. What the hell? His toilet blew up the second time he tried. Hey! He let out a tired sigh and took off his mask in his bedroom. Hold on a second, he stopped moving. What the heck was going on here, Sage? There are pink masks and porn books all over the place. Why the fuck is my bedroom orange? He made fists with his hands and swore to kill the bad guys. He saw red. Hey! As he got out of the shower, he glared at himself in the mirror. Hair that is pink. What a bunch of jerks. He growled in anger, I'll kill them. He grabbed his towel and tensed up when he felt chakra being used a little. He wasn't even aware that chalk bombs were going off in his face. Hey! Shisui almost hid when Kakashi stomped toward him with his eyes burning with anger. He clenched his teeth and asked, where are Obito and Nariko? He didn't betray them, but he did tell them where they were. 
He yelled, left, and ran away. Hey! When Kakashi stepped in between Obito and Nariko during their fight, he kicked both of them away. They blocked the surprise attack and flipped away because they were quick on their feet. With her fist raised, Nariko yelled, Bakashi, can't you see we're training? Obito gave a smug smirk. There was clear chakra charging in Kakashi's eye. Run. He got a blank look from Nariko. Obito looked at him. They did what Kakashi told them to do for the first time in their lives. Hey. Kashina was walking toward the area of Uchiha. When all of a sudden, two black blurs appeared and went by her. Must be Obito and Nariko. Strange. Who were they running from? She turned around and looked back. Next came Silver and Chirping Blue. Oh, Kakashi with a Chidori that is fully charged. One of the new jutsu he made. It made her laugh out loud. Those idiots probably did something again. Hey, I'm sorry, but Nariko Oni-chan isn't home, Itachi said with a shake of his head. Kakashi jerked his head back and walked away, his fingers moving quickly. Itachi-kun, who was at the door? He turned around and looked at his mom, calling her, Hitaki-san. She turned her head to the side and asked, what for? He deadpanned seriously and said, to kill Ko Ne chan Makoto laughed and patted her son on the head. Her son was really cute. But Itachi meant what he said. Hey. When Minato told everyone the news, he was filled with pride. You're looking at the future Yandaimi. Kashina smiled happily and gave the love of her life a big hug. I have always believed in you, Tabane. Nariko gave a smile. In order to protect this, she did. Congratulations, Minato Oji. Nariko felt sad as she thought about how close uncle was. She was still thankful. Team 7 was happy for their sensei's promotion and dream, which he had worked hard for. Obito yelled, Sensei, watch out. I'm going to take that hat from you. Don't worry about it. I'll be the godime. Nariko jumped in. You can be the Rokudime. Nariko gave her best friend a mean look. How about you become the Nanadime? How about you both die? When the three started fighting, Minato, Kashina, and Rin let out a sad sigh of defeat. Kashina asked, want to celebrate at my house? Minato and Rin agreed, and they left the other three behind to follow her. Hey! After Minato's announcement, Team 7 had four members. By official, Kakashi taking over as their Junin leader. This made Obito and Nariko very sad. They promised to work hard to become Junin right away. Hey! Nariko followed Obito as he hopped from tree to tree. They split up and planned to sneak up on Iwagaker's troops to destroy their food. The mission was very important, and it would have been given to another team normally, but Kakashi asked for it. Hiruzen, Minato, and Kashina were the only ones who knew why he chose that mission. He wanted to fix what his dad did wrong. Do what his dad should have done a long time ago. They jumped down to the ground and crept behind trees and under bushes. Because Nariko felt bad about killing the Iwa Nin, she did it quietly. She couldn't let him live and tell the other guards about it. She picked up his dead body and hid it away. The other guards were being killed by Obito. She sneaked further and saw two more Iwa Nins watching over twelve prisoners. She got down on her knees and listened. Holmes, the shinobi with brown hair made fun of him in a mean way. How pitiful, an entire village eradicated. His partner agreed and nodded. These lowlifes were captured on the outskirts of Iwagakur. The last remnants of Uzushiogakur. Our orders were to kill off all the useless ones who aren't able to work anymore. These ugly red-haired freaks deserve, as he choked on his blood, his words turned into a mess. His partner turned around and looked at his dead partner with wide eyes. Before he could say anything else, a kanai got stuck in his forehead. Nariko didn't like killing, but she had to do it sometimes. She stood up and looked at the red-haired prisoners with awe. She was shaking as she breathed out. You're all survivors from Uzushiogakur. One of the prisoners who was chained up gave a short nod. His eyes were heavy, his body looked very hungry. All of them looked like they were going to die soon. Nariko found twelve survivors, ranging in age from teenagers to old people. She broke their chains and fed and watered them with what she had left. It was more important to them than to her. She called up a clone and told it to put explosive seals on the food containers. 
Then she led the upset Uzumaki survivors away from people who might be looking. Soon, Obito joined them, and he slacked his jaws open. I left you for ten minutes. Nariko laughed and introduced the tired Uzumaki family. Hey! Hiruzen looked at Nariko with wide eyes. He looked at Obito, who looked like he was embarrassed. What have you two done? He raised an eyebrow. He would die because of these two Uchihas. Nariko laughed in a strange way and rubbed her hair. She was scared, and thrilled. To wait, he raised his one eyebrow. Well. Nariko let out another nervous laugh and opened the door. It's hard to explain, Gigi. It's better if you see it for yourself. There were twelve Uzumakis with red hair who walked in. Hiruzen's pipe fell to the ground, and tobacco fell all over the place. Wide eyes and slack jaws. What in the name of? So, the whole story was told again. Hey! Once upon a time, thirty Uzumakis lived in a big, safe barn house that was far from people. Two little kids, eight teenagers, ten grown-ups. There are ten old people, twelve men and eighteen women. Twenty-four of the thirty were fully trained ninjas. They got lucky. They were able to stay alive so far thanks to their skills. There were some bad things in their lives, but they were happy. To be able to live on and see their children and grandchildren grow up and learn everything there was to know about their lost village. Then, one day, their happiness was broken when enemies came and attacked. Trapped, killing animals like cattle. Thirty people made it out alive but only 19 were still alive. Humiliated and hurt, they were forced to work for their enemies for little pay. It was hard to find food and clean water. First there was thirst, then there was hunger. The next thing was their will to live. Finally, they gave up and died, one by one. Until one day, Akunoichi with black hair saved them. Hey! Kashina hid her happy cries and looked at the people in her clan who were still alive. She looked right into Nariko's eyes and sobbed again as she gave her a tight hug. Arigato. She had never in her life thought she would meet another Uzumaki. It did come true for her. After a long time. Her dream had never been to be the first woman Hokage. Not at all. That dream was meant for Minato. She wanted to bring the Uzumaki clan back together. Hey. Danzo watched with sharp eyes as a lot of Uzumakis with red hair poured into the village. He didn't believe Hiruzen would be so stupid as to let them do whatever they wanted in Konoha. During the war, he tried to reason, Hiruzen, think about it. They might be spies for all we know. His rival and Hokage rubbed his temples. Danzo, I appreciate your dedication to the village but torture is the last thing they need. We were once allied with the famed village and now we must do our duties to the survivors. He let out a soft sigh, that doesn't mean that they aren't being watched. Minato, Kashina and Team 7 are keeping an eye out for any suspicious behaviors. It was almost like Danzo broke his cane in two. Hiruzen's voice boomed with anger, at the very least, let me, you will leave them alone. That's it. Without saying a word, he turned around and left the office, making plans and schemes. Hiruzen made a mistake by letting them go free. Hey! When Orochimaru was happy, he licked his lips. Each of these Uzumakis, they were known for lasting a long time, which made them perfect for his experiments. If only those annoying kids from Team 7 would just go away. And Kashina and Minato as well. He took a deep breath and waited for the right moment to strike. Hey! Hiruzen walked slowly toward Kashina with a soft smile on his face. Kashina-chan, I hear you're becoming quite the clan head. In a low voice, she said, I'm not sure if I can be the clan head. No one has decided yet. Don't be silly, Kashina-chan, said an older Uzumaki with soft eyes on the shy girl. I can assure you that everyone already regards you as their leader. Kashina got even more red. The eldest Uzumaki looked at Hiruzen with a laugh. Someone who had seen Ashina Uzumaki. Even though he was only a toddler at the time. He learned how to be a seal master from many skilled teachers and is now one of the few in Konoha. Hokage-sama, I want to thank you for your hospitality and kindness. We wouldn't be alive if it weren't for your ninjas. Hiruzen had told him it was his duty to help his friend. After Uzushiogakur fell, that was the very least he could do. Things were no longer thought to be wrong with the Uzumakis after two more months. 
Their names were changed to Konahas. Some started working as ninjas and others as seal masters. As a thank you, Hiruzen gave them a small compound from a clan that no longer exists. They could finally call it home. Kashina took over as leader of their clan that day, and the group was called the Uzumaki clan. Hey, Nariko, Obito, Shisui, and Itachi often went to the Uzumaki compound. As part of helping to fix up the clan grounds, they cleaned them up. They painted their homes bright colors and put swirly symbols on every surface while the Uzumakis lived there. Seal masters were putting up the necessary seals around the compound to make it safe. Their enemies would never be able to get into their land. No, the Uzumakis were not stupid. They knew better than to do that after a long time. Many other ninjas helped them through Kashina. Doden players who were good at what they did hollowed out the Uzumaki grounds and made small canyons through the houses. The suit users came next. They made whirlpools and rivers. It was watered and sakura trees and bright flowers were planted. They sped up the growth with chakra, and soon the Uzumaki compound smelled and looked like the destroyed Uzushiogakure. Hey! The Uchiha clan became a real ally for the Uzumaki clan through Nariko and Itachi. Both the clan and Fugaku believed what Nariko said. He never in his life thought that his daughter would bring the Uzumaki clan back together and make a good deal with them. The Uchiha clan kept them safe and gave them good weapons. The Uzumaki clan kept them safe by giving them quality seals. Everyone comes out ahead in this case. Hey! Hiruzen said with his fists clenched, Team 7, your job is to destroy the Canopy Bridge. After this Iwagakur won't be able to provide supplies to their front fighters. I'm counting on you. When Nariko heard what their next mission was, she almost jumped. That was it. It was either now or never. Along with her team, she would make sure that no one died on this mission. As soon as the Hokage told them to go, Nariko ran home and found one of her scrolls hidden in one of her secret bins. There were many different types of seals on her scroll, such as shock seals, water seals, chakra seals, medical seals, and more. It was clear that she was fully ready for this mission. She swore on her grave that nothing bad would happen. Hey! His team gave Kakashi useful things, and even Obito and Nariko sent him something. Something that caught him off guard. He got a flying thunder god Kanai as a gift from Minato. Rin came next with a first aid kit. He was given some jutsu scrolls by Obito. Finally, Nariko gave him a set of seals that included medical seals, Raiden seals, gravity seals, and many more. If Team 7 saw that his lips were moving a little, they didn't say anything. Hey! Obito looked at his best friend carefully and raised an eyebrow. She seemed jittery for some strange reason. Nariko-chan, when she looked at him, the girl's eyes got narrow as she took in her surroundings. To be honest, it was getting weird for him. Obito, focus. Kakashi gave her a quick look. Rin raised her eyebrows and frowned. Minato looked at the student of his girlfriend with hawk eyes. Team 7 became more focused on their mission after Nariko spoke. No one was brave enough to speak up. Nariko quickly blocked the kanai that was coming at her and killed the clone with a smart kill. It seemed like she was getting stronger every day. It was getting harder and harder for even Kakashi to beat her. It was easier to fight Obito, but his Sharingan was very dangerous. While Rin was simple to beat, I don't mean to be rude or cocky, but the girl wasn't a very good frontline attacker. She was a medic nin a lot better. She clenched her wet hands and felt sweat roll off her forehead. She didn't want to say it, but she was really scared. She flipped backwards and threw five kanais. She was happy to see the clones disappear in a puff of smoke. Things were going a lot better for Obito than she thought. He was able to kill every enemy Nin thanks to his training and their Sharingan. Obito was too strong for even Kakashi to beat. His Sharingan gave him more confidence and made him better at what he did. She kept from getting hit with another Kanai by bending her back backwards. The last time, she had learned her lesson. Since that terrible accident, she had asked her dad to teach her how to avoid getting caught. Her dad kept his word and trained her until she could close her eyes and avoid any projectile. Or while she was sleeping. Chakra was sent to her strong legs as her palms were placed on the ground. It was like she coiled her leg muscles and kicked another clone very hard. She felt tingly, 
and without saying a word, she somersaulted forward and landed on her two legs. Also right on time, one of the clones tried to hit her with force, but she blocked it and spun to the side. She kept him quiet with a clean kill. Not gonna happen, Baka. When she heard a thousand birds singing, her eyes got really big. Kakashi. She locked her eyes on his shape and made them narrow in small circles. Along with Obito and Rin, she said, that idiot. They all held their breath as they waited for Minato to kill the real enemy and save his stubborn student. At the same time, Nariko was amazed. Her father was truly amazing. Sugoi. The other people on Team 7 could only agree with them. Hey. Obito and Nariko were very bright. They gave off waves of cockiness. Kakashi glared at them while Rin took care of his shoulder wound. Shut up. This time, Kakashi, they have every right to make fun of you, Minato yelled with a furious frown. You could have died, what were you thinking when you rushed into battle without thinking? He shook his head, dismay in his eyes. The last Hitaki was ashamed and looked down with his hands clenched into fists. He had always wanted to make his sensei proud, one of the few people he looked up to. Minato let out a soft sigh. Kakashi's wound is serious. Let's get some rest before we continue. Team 7 found a place to sleep for the night. Hey, sensei, why does Kakashi act the way he does? So, Minato told Obito and Nariko the story of a happy boy whose father loved him and cared for him. He looked up to and loved very much his father. Then one day Sakuma was sent on a very important mission, he said in a low voice. His team got captured and he found himself stuck between two choices. One of the hardest in his entire life. Finish the mission and abandon his teammates or rescue them and abort the mission. Nariko took a deep breath. Obito was sweating a lot, and his eyes were as big as saucers. No one was brave enough to speak up. Both of them were deeply moved by Kakashi's sad story. He chose to save his teammates at the cost of his reputation. When he came back everyone ignored him and ridiculed his actions which led to another war. He became ostracized and finally he succumbed into a deep depression. In the end, he committed suicide. Nariko rubbed her eyes and sniffed. Obito doing what she does. Ever since then, Kakashi has chosen to follow the rules and kept to himself, Minato said with a sad sigh. He said with narrowed eyes, be smart about how you use this information. They told him they would not break his trust and then went to sleep feeling sad. Hey! The next day, Minato left Team 7 to attack the front lines and bring the Iwa Nin's attention away from their tasks. Kakashi took charge of them. Not even Obito spoke out against it. He looked surprised and raised an eyebrow. Nariko looked at her captain and gave him a nod. We're yours to command. Kakashi and Rin looked at her like she was crazy when she said that. They never thought she would say something like that. Where did those two go? He raised an eyebrow and shook his head no. Let's go. With their minds on their mission goal, four blurs shot deeper into enemy territory. Break down the bridge. Hey. Nariko got stiff. She thought someone was watching her. It wasn't there when she looked around. That didn't mean there wasn't an enemy, though. The people on her team watched her make the enemy and hidden seals. Kakashi scratched the side of his mask. Okay, I get it. Rin became even more wary and looked around her more carefully. When Sharingan was turned on, Obito looked around. He got stiff and ran straight at Kakashi. Duck. Even though Kakashi didn't understand, he did what he was told and felt the wind hit his back. He kicked the enemy away while putting his hands on the ground. A painful groan and a loud hiss came next. The shinobi with silver hair got into fighting stance and said, Formation B. Obito status. Team 7 got back together. The enemy is using some kind of jutsu to become invincible. I can pick his chakra with my sharingan. For the moment, I can't seem to find him. He must have used the trees to hide. Obito said quietly. Nariko glared at the trees and tensed up when she felt chakra flash above and to the left of them. In this body, her ability to sense chakras had tripled. The only idea she had about her strange new power was that she had been reborn with all of her memories still intact. But it still gave her a huge edge. Because of this, she was a great sensor. She quickly threw two kanais with chalk seals on them. 
When the white dust exploded and covered their enemies from head to toe, her lips turned up. She smugly said, Try hiding now, you jerks. Kakashi gave a thank you nod. Two Iwa Shinobi, who were their enemies, showed up. Both of them look angry and ready to kill them. The Iwa Nin with the bushy brown hair spat at Nariko with an ugly sneer on his face. You brats will be sorry, especially you. I'll enjoy torturing you until you beg for death. Like you will touch her. Obito growled angrily. Their lips curled in savage pleasure as they looked at his Sharingan. And Uchiha, what a delicious treat. That scary look made Nariko shiver. Through clenched teeth, Kakashi growled, over my dead body. Much to Obito's surprise. Did Kakashi stand up for him? Kakashi spoke up and said, Code Orange. His words had a secret meaning. After that, chaos broke out. Nariko first threw her barrier seal, and then she did her famous chalk seal. Each member of Team 7 put their advanced gravity seals around their area and then their invisibility seals. The seals changed colors to fit their surroundings and shone. This was something new that Nariko had done. She made both seals with the idea of a chameleon in mind. Then there were loud curses, and when the dust settled, Team 7, without Nariko, ran away. Of the enemy ninjas, one asked, are you for real? Nariko laughed to herself as a happy memory came back to her. She used to attack straight on. It was smart to use that strategy here. Kakashi liked her idea, which was one of the few times he acknowledged her. On the outside, she seemed like a stubborn girl. She yelled at them in a childish way while pointing her finger at them. I can take you both on. Just when he was supposed to, Obito yelled, You baka, you were supposed to hide. His voice could be heard all over the forest. The enemy couldn't figure out where he was. Nariko scolded, Shut up. While acting like she was very upset. They both looked like they couldn't believe it. One of the two smiled and charged straight at Nariko, giving her the evil eye. Nariko dodged his attack and smiled like she had won. She said it in a mean way, Tisk, tisk. Always look underneath the underneath. It was bright blue in her hands, and she said, Seal activate. Wah, the whole area was lit up, and a blue wall surrounded them. Gravity turned into a scary monster because of it. The enemy gave way when the kanai hit him in the neck. Sharingan was spinning around with fear as Obito whispered, and check. Because he didn't understand, the other Iwan Nin tensed up and jumped over the barrier. He went right where they wanted him to. Kakashi and Rin used the invisibility seal as a cloak to sneak up behind the shinobi from both sides. It was better to hit the enemy from two sides and trap them. Rin used chakra scalpels to hurt the enemy's legs, and Kakashi stabbed him in the heart. The enemy was too late to notice that they had chakra hidden away. That invisible seal was made by Nariko with help from Satsun Sensei, who is the best seal master in the Uzumaki clan. He had helped her through all of her problems. But she finally got the seal she had been working on. Her only reason for making it was for this mission. Even though it was short, Team 7 was tense afterward. It's possible that this mission would have gone badly without Obito's Sharingan. Kakashi let a small smile emerge on his face. Good job everyone. His team was very proud of him. Hey. Thanks to the Sharingan, Obito was able to question the last enemy. They learned that more Iwa Nins would be coming to their outpost, which was a few miles from the Canopy Bridge. Between 20 and 30 Shinobi. During wartime, that kind of information was very important. So, Team 7 went to where the enemy was hiding to set up a trap and make as many seals as they could. The enemy would not know what hit them. There were other people besides Minato who could make the enemy scared. Hey! Team 7 was nervous as they waited for the enemy shinobi to show up. Kakashi gave Nariko a nod as soon as they stepped inside the perimeter. It's time to do something, was her quiet answer. She turned on all the gravity seals at the same time while grinning foxily. Obito smiled with pride when all of the Iwa Nin fell to their knees, gasping in pain from the sudden rise in gravity. Her chakra was used by the gravity seals. The more chakra she used, the stronger the pressure got. She let out a weak breath, and her hands were shaking. She always felt dizzy when she lost a lot of chakra all at once. She shook her head to clear her mind. She had to get to work on it right away. 
It was hard for her mind to get used to this body's chakra level. It wasn't terrible, but it would never be as good as the life she had before. There was Team 7 in front of all the shinobi. Nani, we lost to a bunch of jerks. Yelled one of them, face slamming into the ground in anger. Kakashi gave the person who spoke up a mean look. It'd be favorable on your part to keep your mouth shut or I'll rip out your tongue. That pretty much made him shut up. It wasn't asked, how long, Nariko? For the seal's effects to wear off. I think it will be less than 30 minutes, she said. He gave the signal with a nod. Kill them all but one. Obito took a loud swallow. Rin turned pale, and Nariko closed her eyes for a second. The leader of the Junin was the first to move. With the kanai in his hand, he began stabbing the enemy one by one. We don't have a choice, Nariko said, giving up on sleepless nights and bad dreams. She could see that Rin was getting paler and paler after each kill. She shook her head and put a warm hand on Rin. I'll finish them, don't. Rin turned her head, I can't just stand there and watch. I'll continue. Nariko let out a sigh and went on. They left one shinobi alive in the end. You're all monsters. He screamed out of control, shaking all over. He choked out. Dear Ka am I, and then threw up. Obito questioned him, Kakashi said in a cold voice. Obito sighed in exhaustion, turned on his Sharingan, and grabbed the enemy by the chin. Nariko wished she was already at home, cuddling up with her cute brother. Hey. No one was crazy during the war, Nariko said with a heavy heart. During the questioning, Minato showed up with the help of the kanai that Kakashi was given. He had told them to set the scared shinobi free. It caught everyone by surprise when she asked to keep the dead shinobi in one of her seals. As a sign of appreciation, no one should be left to rot and be eaten by animals. All of them should have been buried properly. At first, Kakashi laughed at her request, but he changed his mind and began to help. It would take too long without his help, he told them. Even though Nariko didn't say anything, she knew that he agreed with her. The shinobi was given all the scrolls by Team 7 and told to run. Hey, mission complete. Team 7 had finished the mission without losing anyone, which made Nariko look very happy. That much stress would have been too much for her. In thanks, Hiruzen bowed his head. Good job, Team 7. You have done Konoha a great favor. Without the bridge Iwa can't deliver supplies to their shinobis. I have a feeling this war will be over soon. Nariko could only hope that it was true. Hey. A tired sounding voice said, to Daima. Makoto showed up. Her cool broke down. On her knees, Nariko fell, and tears ran down her cheeks. Nariko. She could only hold on to her mom's blouse and cry her eyes out. I'm so sorry Ka-chan. I didn't want to. I really didn't. She kept saying sorry, to all the people she killed. To herself. To her mind. How was Itachi able to kill everyone in his family? How did he deal with all the shame and self-hatred? Hey. He closed his eyes and let out a breath. I see. Makoto stood there with her hands clenched tight. She was sick of the war. Her husband wasn't home very often. Her child was so traumatized it was unthinkable. She prayed to Kami every day that her family would come back. Still alive. But the war had gone on for too long. Her heart just couldn't take it any longer. Was her little boy going to have to fight too? She put her hand on her stomach. Fugaku. She can't handle this anymore. I can't handle this. He sighed and pulled his wife closer to him. Neither can I, Makoto. Hey, Nariko got better after she had a breakdown. Someone to cry on had been helpful for her. Someone to talk to. Her mom worried and fussed over her all the time. She didn't say anything, though. She would do anything for her mom because she loved her. She tensed up when her dad walked in. And only calmed down when he walked up to her and pulled her in like a father. She gave him another hug. Nariko. Her dad said first, I'm proud of you. She looked up in shock. Her dad rarely, if ever, told her how great she was. When his strange daughter sniffed quietly and rubbed her eyes, Fugaku laughed softly. I'm not crying too Chan there is just something in my eyes. I'm sure there is, Nariko. Hey, Itachi ran to his sister as soon as he saw her with a soft smile on her face. 
Noriko knelt down on her knees and hugged him tightly. I missed you, oh Tudo. That day, Itachi cried on her shoulder, but he wouldn't say it. Noriko told him she wouldn't tell anyone. Hey, so, what happened to you? She laughed softly. Shisui looked up at the stars and asked again, that bad, huh? With a solemn look, Noriko looked to her right at the amazing Uchiha. How many? There was no need to explain. He knew what she meant. Too many. She gave a sad nod. Hey. Noriko walked toward the Uzumaki compound with her brother following close behind. They put their hands together. Have you kept up your training? Hi. Nei chan. He said with a nod. Then, I'm shy, will you train me afterward? Sure. Kai chan. He quietly laughed because he was happy. A lot of red-haired Uzumakis waved at the Uchiha siblings as they went through the big gate. Because of his sister, Itachi knew that all of these people were still alive. She was a truly wonderful person. A lot of people in the clan looked up to her. They looked up to her even more than Uzumaki Kashina, who was the leader of their clan at the time. But no one could blame them. It was almost certain that they would die out, but Noriko saved them. He looked up to her the most. His hero. His Nei Chan. Hey. The Uchiha with the blue eyes bowed very low to her Fuinjutsu master. Satsun Sensei. I feel honored. So do I, Noriko. Fugaku bowed his head in respect as he stood next to her. Uzumaki Sama. I, please call me, Satsun. Okay. The leader of the Uchiha clan said, Satsun San. We would really appreciate it if your clan would take some Uchihas as apprentices. The Uzumaki made up their minds right away. Then so be it, we'll take two apprentices of our choosing. Thank you, Fugaku and Noriko bowed. All of them, Arigato. Hey, Noriko was one of the two clerks. The other person was a girl named Nozomi. The Uzumaki clan kept their word and taught them how to seal things. The Uchiha clan would have another skill to make people afraid of them. Giving and getting Fuinjutsu. A lot of people thought it was too much. Fugaku, but not that. He smiled with pride at how well known his clan was. Hey. Noriko closed her eyes and slack jawed. Itachi was staring at her with a sick look on his face. He was not sure whether to be amazed or disgusted. What do you say, brat? Want to train under my tutelage? The Uchiha with the blue eyes swallowed loudly. She was shocked. Was this real? It hurt her eyes. Her lips were shaking. Her hands were shaking. Kid, you don't have to if you don't want to. Just don't cry. Jamiya replied quickly. Right away, he was hit with a hard hug. Itachi made a face at how her sister reacted. He couldn't always read her. It was one of those times. The Sanin with white hair looked at Itachi with blank eyes. But he had no idea either. Noriko could not help but cry. And promised to keep him alive and safe. Hey. The two of them sat down at the table. Their dinner table was full of people they cared about. They're very important people. They are Fugaku, Makoto, Noriko, and Itachi. With Shisui, who had come along. Kakashi, Obito, and Rin make up Team 7. It was just the Uzumaki family there. Finally, there was Jiraiya who was making a sexy face. Minato put his hand on Kashina's stomach and the two of them smiled softly. We want to announce something big. We're going to be parents, T.T. Ebane. Everyone went cold. Then it was time to give and receive hugs. For a fresh start and the end of the war, they ate a lot that night. Hey. Noriko just strolled through the streets of Konoha. She was thrilled when Minato and Kashina told her about their big surprise. A twin of hers was created. Could it be a boy? Or a girl? She had no idea. But she was also slightly angry at him. She had to do it. It made her feel sick, though. She chose to clear her mind by going for a walk. That doesn't mean it worked, but still. She didn't want to feel that way. They would be hurt to see how she reacted when their new baby was born. Ko Chan. As she turned around, Shisui stood there with an eyebrow raised. Could he see the anger and self-hatred in her eyes? He asked worriedly, are you okay? His face showed disappointment. She sighed and shook her head. Do you ever have the feeling that you want to shut everything away from your mind? All the times, she frowned when he told her the truth. But, he said, then I think of all my precious people and smile. 
Even you Noriko, you're all very important to me. She gave him a small smile when he said that. Hearing that made her heart warm. Thank you, Shisui. I think I needed to hear that. He shook his head and told her, don't bring it up. He smiled and asked, wanna spar? Sure. Hey, Satsun sensei I did it. The old man laughed out loud and gave his student a loving look. Nariko-chan, you really are one of a kind. He had asked to train the heir to the Uchiha family himself. After that, it was clear that all of the Uzumakis wanted to train her. There were three days in which the Uzumakis couldn't make up their minds. They held a contest to see who could make the best seal under a lot of stress and pressure. He won in the end. He felt good about himself as he thought about his seal and smiled. There was a seal that held water and opened when someone wanted to drink. Another thing it could do was hold more water and filter out any dirty water. Their little competition made a lot of noise in Konoha, and lots of people wanted to see the show. People who came into the Uzumaki compound had to buy tickets to get in. The clan head's family and most of them were Uchiha's. They made a lot of money and used it to fix up their compound even more. The Uzumaki treasure was also getting bigger and better. The money was used by some Uzumakis to open new shops in the area. Uzumaki Daichi opened Konoha's only seal shop. There is a bookstore now owned by Uzumaki Chinatsu. The treasury would be filled up again with that money. Hey! In the beginning, the Uzumakis were seen as outsiders. Kanoha was wary of the strangers. But that picture was broken piece by piece when they saw their future Yandaimi hanging out with the strange people with red hair. When they heard that the Uzumaki who lived there had become the leader of the Uzumaki clan, they didn't worry about much anymore. Soon, the red-haired outsiders and the Uchiha clan got to know each other, and no one in the village was stupid enough to ignore what they said. This is especially true since the Uchiha heir learned how to make seals from the best seal master. The other clans came after the Uchiha clan, but none of them were as respected as the Uchiha clan. There was a reason they only hired Uchihas to learn how to fight. No one would have thought that in just one year, the Uzumaki clan would do so well. They did, though. The Uzumaki were known as the best Fuinjutsu users in Konoha by the end. And for giving birth to children without a name. Hey! The village is called Konohagakur and is hidden in the leaves. Membership in the Uzumaki clan. Fuinjutsu and pulling jokes are what they're known for. 25 people and counting. Hey! Nariko was very happy because Sasuke was going to be born soon. Born in the summer, her mother smiled warmly at her as she cheered loudly. I can't wait to hold the baby, Ka-chan. Makoto smiled and put her hand on her growing belly. Tell me about it. Uchiha sat down next to her mother and Itachi. She put her ear on her mother's stomach, which was bare. We're going to have a baby brother, Kai-chan. She said with a big smile as she looked at Itachi. He closed his eyes and gave a small smile. Hi, Kone-chan, our baby brother to protect. Miyoto was so happy that she almost cried, but she held her kids closer to her instead. You're all my children to protect. Hey. At first, Fugaku wanted to bring Itachi with him to the battlefield where the battle was going on. To help him grow up quickly, Nariko was adamantly against it. Her little brother would never be sent to see some dead bodies. That was also what his wife said. He had to let go of that thought in the end. In the end, he was glad that his wife and oldest daughter said no to his request. His son didn't need to see all that killing. Hey! He broke his cane. That bumbling old fool. How dare he choose Minato above Orochimaru? He called his Hokage names and insulted him. And now he's spreading the word that all Uzumakis from around the nations can gain immediate entrance after a thorough blood and loyalty test. He turned around with a mean sneer on his face. Hey! A lot of Uzumakis showed up, which made Kashina very happy. As leader of the clan, she had a lot of work to do, but she wouldn't have it any other way. Being pregnant, Makoto had nothing better to do than offer to help. They worked together to deal with the evil paperwork. They could still have fun, though. Two pregnant women could get away with everything, after all. From everyone, even your dear husband. Hey! Nariko swore and ran to where she was going. She wasn't on time for her lessons with Minato-sensei. 
Kashina stopped training when she found out she was pregnant and won't start again until after the baby is born. At this point, she had only worked as an apprentice for Jiraiya, Satsun, and sometimes Minato. Kakashi laughed and said, You're late. I see Obito's influencing you a lot. Shut it, Scarecrow. Before the last member of Team 7 arrived, Minato stopped the two from fighting. After 30 minutes, they saw Obito running. Kakashi laughed and put his arms across his chest. About damn time. Minato told him, Kakashi. Nariko rolled her eyes and waved at her best friend who was late. When Rin laughed, Obito gasped, I'm sorry. I was helping Mitsune Obaa Chan with her groceries. Team 7, without the Hitaki with the silver hair, burst out laughing. Hey! Minato said with sadness, after today, I won't be able to teach you anymore. You will all grow up to be formidable shinobis and kunoichis. And I can't wait to see what paths you will take. But know that I'll always be there if you need any help or advice. My door will forevermore remain open for you. He smiled as he looked at each one. Nariko rubbed her eyes, Rin smiled with tears in her eyes, and Obito cried out loud. Even Kakashi turned away, his cheeks red. You have been wonderful students to teach to and I'm so proud of you all. They were thrilled when he said nice things about them and promised to make him proud. Hey! Kakashi was chosen by Minato to be an elite shinobi and work directly for him. Rin taught an apprentice Irio Ninjutsu at the hospital while he was away. Obito tried to get Junin. And Nariko already had a lot on her plate as Jiraiya and Satsun's worker. There was also her own plan for learning Irio Ninjutsu. Hey! Araya's loud voice rang out in his soon-to-be office, Minato. Jiraiya-sensei, what do I owe this honor to? His sensei, who was like a father to him, smiled big. I see you have taught your students the Rasengan. He cocked his head to the side and nodded. What about it? He was shocked when Jiraiya began to whine as tears ran down his face. Sensei, what about me? Am I chopped liver? Minato dripped with sweat. You can be such a child at times, Sensei. He said quietly, I have some free time to teach you the technique. That was it. Jiraiya stopped crying and smiled again. That's more like it. Minato made a face. Hey. Nariko shook when yellow eyes locked onto her. She glared at Itachi and pushed him behind her. It didn't matter how much he had changed in her time. He was still the weirdo who was crazy about immortality in this one. The way he looked at her and them made her very angry. Gross. Itachi agreed with her in his mind. He thought Orochimaru was creepy. With an angry grimace, she pulled Itachi along with her. Then, what's the hurry, Nariko-chan? She pulled back. None of your damn business. Watch that tongue of yours, or you could end up in a very dangerous situation, he said with cold eyes and a harsh voice. The siblings were relieved when a very angry Fugaku showed up. He didn't look happy either. He was so angry that it hurt. Sharingan was on fire, and the Tomos were spinning crazy. Or else what, Orochimaru? The snake Sanin gave the clan leader a mean look. Nothing Fugaku. He said with anger in his voice, that's Fugaku-san for you. Next time you dare to threaten my children, I might be tempted to rip that tongue of yours. Orochimaru left the Uchiha family and sent Fugaku to the bottom of hell as a curse. Hey! She frowned when she saw how upset her husband looked. Anata. Makoto. I threatened Orochimaru. She tried not to gasp and sat down next to her husband. Fugaku had always kept his cool. There are only certain times when you would threaten someone, let alone one of the legendary Sanin. She asked him in a soft voice, what happened? He raised his head and rubbed his temple. I found him threatening Nariko. She stopped moving and her eyes went wide. Fugaku had to hold his wife back when her fear turned into anger. I'll show that bastard. How dare he threaten my baby girl? When he was weak against her strength, Fugaku groaned. Makoto was and always had been a strong kunoichi, even when she wasn't pregnant. Hell isn't as angry as a woman who was snubbed. Hey! He looked at his sister. The creepy way her eyes would look. Like how her body tensed up when there was a loud noise. She thought he couldn't see how scary being a ninja was. He wasn't, though, not at all. His heart would hurt so badly every time his sister left for a mission. 
It was clear to him how much it had hurt her. Her eyes. Those pretty blue eyes showed all the pain and suffering she was going through. Even though Noriko tried to hide it, she did slip up sometimes. He could count those times on one hand. When he did that, though, he could see how much his sister hurt. Nay Chan, what is the meaning of life? That sister looked up in shock. He asked, what does it mean to be a shinobi? First you need to know what life is all about. Life is precious, O oh Tudo, and we should enjoy it to the fullest. Noriko looked at her brother with interest. She said, one should handle each life with utmost care. He asked, then why do we destroy it then? His face showed that he didn't understand. The choice to destroy depends on your actions. She looked deeply into his eyes while stroking his cheeks. Imagine this, Itachi, you're a shinobi. You have fought against your enemy and he drops unconscious. What will you do next? I would kill him if he is a threat to me or my teammates. She spoke up after a while, what if he isn't a threat? Itachi opened his eyes wide in shock. Quote dot dot dot, I would let him live. Noriko cocked her head, and her black bangs flew to the side. You see, in the end all our actions will have consequences. If you kill him then the family of the shinobi will seek retribution. If you allow him to live on then his family would be forever grateful to you. She took a bite. You will decide what kind of shinobi you will become. It's all in your hands. What kind of kunoichi are you, Nei Chan? Her smile was so real that it made her whole face shine. To protect those precious to me, I would kill anyone who dares to harm you, my family and friends are Konoha. That's my shinobi way. Itachi nodded, beginning to understand what a real shinobi was all about. So ninjas are those who should protect their precious person. When you have someone to protect, you really become a strong shinobi, Noriko said in a serious tone. Itachi slowly shook his head, still thinking. I see. You're so cute, Kai-chan. Trying to act so mature. Itachi yelled, Nei-chan. His cheeks turned bright red. Noriko laughed out loud, and her ocean blue eyes lit up with love. She kissed him on the forehead with love. I will always protect you, O oh Tuto. The old boy was amazed by her sister as he looked up at her. She was all the things he sought. Itachi cared about his sister. Noriko let out a tired sigh. During the months when there was no war, she did nothing but train. Kung Fu, Ninjutsu. Those two things about her were still her best in this body. Fuinjutsu, Ninjutsu or Irio. To her surprise, she was moving quite quickly. Not even Genjutsu. Getting better was her weakest point. The sight of her not being able to use Genjutsu well scared Fugaku to death. Not very good, but her stubborn father told her, Uchiha don't do average, only exceptional. She had to do another job as an apprentice for her father because of this. He was determined to help her improve her genjutsu. But she did everything for the greater good. There would be peace. She would get there faster this time. It was important for her reputation as the child of the prophecy. Hey! Itachi opened his eyes wide in surprise. Hello, is someone there? No one picked up. Strange, he thought he heard Itachi say, who are you? Show yourself. In a loud voice. He wasn't showing it, but he was worried. He kept a close eye on his surroundings as he began to feel and look around the forest. There you go, being hidden behind that tree. When two more shinobis showed up in front of him, his eyes got really big. He turned around and ran straight back to the village without saying a word. Why did he walk around the edges of Konoha? One of the thieves dove at him, but he was able to avoid being hit and began flickering his chakra to show that he was scared. It was getting bad for him. The people who were chasing him had a reason, and he didn't want to find out what it was. He only hoped that his parents, sister, or someone else would show up on time, before it was too late. Hey! She became stiff. Her eyes lit up. She was letting out waves of anger. I'll kill them. Noriko was embarrassed as she ran to where her brother had last been seen. From far away, she could see three blurs. What the fuck was going on here? This made her think too much of Hanada's failed attempt to kidnap her. She felt a sharp pain in her stomach. She could see a small bag on the shinobi's back from where she was standing. Screams could be heard coming from the sack as it moved. 
She clenched her teeth. She tried to hide her chakra as best she could and followed because she was angry, confused, and scared. They'd feel bad about taking her little brother away. It felt like her chakra was bubbling and swirling inside her. She cursed to herself, fuck, because her chakra levels were only half of what they usually were. To kill them, she would have to use everything she had. She took off her wrist warmer, bit her thumb, and set off her invisibility seal. Her body sparkled until it was gone. She moved forward with the agility of a panther. When she finally caught up to them, she snarled and tapped one of the trees with her paralyzing seal. She called up a copy of herself to grab Itachi. The effect happened right away. They got cold and fell to the ground. I'm not done yet, she yelled angrily. She turned off her invisibility seal and added a chakra absorbing seal. Her body could be seen. Her anger did too. She didn't pay attention to the pain cries that she heard. She glared meanly at her prey as she stalked it. She grabbed one of the three and asked another question. How dare you hurt my brother? Who sent you? Fu C K Y O U bit C H. As Nariko helped Itachi, she took a quick look at her copy. It is not smart to hurt this man in front of him. He was still a kid and very easy to understand. To keep her temper in check, she carelessly threw him to the ground. Fine, I'll leave that to the torture unit. They'll have a blast, she spit out. Sorry, she turned around. Shock and fear seeped into her body. As more ninjas showed up, they surrounded them. Ten, more, stupid, the shinobi. Atachi's shaky scream of, Nay Chan, echoed through the forest. Stupid, everyone where they at. Her eyes got bigger as her fear grew. There was no way she could stay here with Itachi. No, leave him be you monsters. She kicked him in the face and avoided his wind jutsu. Itachi and her clone were also fighting. But until she spread out, her clone could only help so much. And Itachi was only a little boy of four years old. It made her heart stutter wildly. Don't care about anything. She gave another shinobi coming at her a butterfly kick. She was hit hard against the tree when she tried to avoid another blow to the head. Itachi screamed, Kone-chan let go of me, and kicked and struggled. She spat blood at her attacker and kicked him between the legs. Then she made a Raiden seal. His body moved around and fell to the ground. Not conscious. She turned her head. She bit her tongue really hard and shook her head. Her clone unfortunately spread out. Itachi, I'll kill you bastards. Why didn't anyone show up? Surely, they could have felt her chakra dancing all over the place. When she came to a stop, she did a somersault over an enemy nin and tapped him on the head with another seal that made him paralyzed. She stepped around another shinobi and kicked him badly. She heard the sound of bones breaking. But that didn't stop her. She kept going without fear. A huge Rasengan showed up when she swished chakra to her left hand. It made her eyes narrow. Stop now, or we'll kill him. She tensed up. Her eyes got bigger, and she let the punch hit her. Her Rasengan disappeared in a cloud of chakra. She fell to the ground. Not easy. Two teeth and blood were spit out. She heard Itachi yelling and struggling. She felt bad for him. She swore at her weak body as she got up, to get hit in the back with an axe. Are you wondering why no one is coming? Are you wondering why we took your brother? It was probably the leader. He laughed in a funny way. Who would have thought that a mere seven-year-old would do this much damage? When someone else kicked her in the stomach, she screamed in pain. Saint up. There had to be a way out of this. What, though? She had tears running down her face. Please, don't H hurt him. The black strands were pulled so tight that they were about to rip out of her head. Shut up, bitch. You're lucky we want you alive. She opened her eyes wide in shock. You're not here for Itachi, are you? He laughed. Correct. We needed bait to lure you out. You're always surrounded by powerful ninjas. While he, he jerked his thumb toward the tear-stained Itachi, was not. To our surprise we didn't need to take any drastic matters. Instead we were helped out by a generous shinobi. He grabbed her by the throat, pulled her up, and squeezed her hard. You killed my brother and son in cold blood. I'll make you suffer like I did. He said with dark eyes and a dark smile. After that, she passed out. Itachi's voice was the last thing she heard before she was pulled into the darkness. 
not willingly. Hey. He moved the shoji door to the side and said, to Daima. Okay where is Nariko and Itachi? He made an angry face. Nariko left me three hours ago. Itachi was training near the Uchiha grounds. Did they leave a note or something? The worry in Makoto's eyes was clear as she shook her head. Fugaku felt sick to his stomach. I'll go looking for them. He told her, stay safe, Anada. He was gone like a swirl of burning leaves. Hey. Fugaku showed up out of the blue while Jiraiya and Minato were drinking sake together. Minato, I need your help. When he saw the calm clan leader, Jiraiya raised an eyebrow and wondered what was so important to him. When he saw that the Sharingan was turned on, he began to worry. Fugaku only did that when things were really bad. In anger, the Uchiha let out a breath. Nariko and Itachi's chakra have vanished completely. I can't find them in the village. With wide eyes, Minato stiffened up. The toad sage said something bad. Kashina asked with her hands on her stomach, Minato Fugaku, what are you doing here? She had never seen Fugaku so cold and unforgiving in all her life. She knew what was going on after being told. Hey. Wake up, you bitch. Someone hit Nariko. She jerked her eyes open groggily. Wah? She got big eyes when all of her memories came back to her. Where is my brother, bastards? A dark laugh could be heard. She called up Chakra and was shocked to find that it was slow and unresponsive. I'll fucking kill you, asshole. What did you do to me? Assurance, was his cold answer. Now, let's have a talk. Fuck you. He stuck out his tongue. That wasn't a smart move, hit him. Nariko raised an eyebrow because she didn't get what he was saying. Not a second went by before she heard a voice she knew screaming in pain. This made her fight like a beast, and tears came out of her eyes. She said over and over, I'll kill you, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. Her only answer was to laugh. They were wrong to think they could tie her to a chair. Hit him again. Another sad cry. Nariko choked out, stop, please. Hit him until I say otherwise. She slammed into the chair and fell to the ground. Stop, I beg of you, he's only four. Itachi's loud scream turned into sobs, he was no longer being hurt. Before she could let out a sigh of relief, she was hit in the stomach with a hard kick. As she choked on blood, she closed her eyes and wished she could form a ball. WH at DUW ant from us. When the man laughed like crazy, her blood ran cold. You chose this, not I, your brother will die because of you. It's only fair, after all, he grinned cruelly. Let me tell you a story of a dedicated father, a proud brother and a loving son. Once upon a time, he said, a war broke out, specifically the Third Shinobi World War. In this war many shinobis died but it was all for the greater good. He spit out disgust. Then one day, the father, brother and son were split up. The father left his son in the hands of his brother. They promised to return to him. Days passed and the father heard nothing from his family. He had blood running down his fists. Then, one day he was summoned to his captain. He received two scrolls and a mournful look. He was left with the corpses of his brother and son. His will to fight for his country turned into revenge. He sought out the killer going by the name of Nariko who used some form of fuinjutsu to paralyze and kill many Iwa shinobis in cold blood. Two of them had been his brother and son. He grew dark. Nariko gasped in shock and looked straight into the brown-haired Iwa Nin's eyes. He wanted to kill her in the worst possible way, so, he abandoned his country and searched for her in Konoha. No, he kept talking, ignoring her. He managed to convince others to come with him. Others who had been wronged in the same way. She was shocked and said, no, no, please. Unfortunately, his prey was always surrounded by legendary ninjas, he couldn't afford to make any mistake. Another sob that is hard to breathe, but it seemed Kami was helping him out, because one day a shinobi with bandages approached him and offered him a deal that he could not resist. Her thoughts were all over the place. He promised to keep him and his friends hidden to get their revenge. In exchange he would be rid of an annoyance. And now we're here. He ended with a fake grin. Did you like my story? Nariko tried not to throw up and looked down in shame. He hit her hard on the cheeks and said, shut up. She said, I never wanted to K. You'll regret it. I'll make you regret it. The Uchiha with blue eyes got paler. Hey. 
Orochimaru took a seat and watched the show. He wasn't the one who came up with this brilliant plan, but it was still amazing. He looked briefly at the person standing next to him. The man was interested and asked, why did you do this? He was seen with one eye. Changes aren't good. Changes means uncertainties and that is something Konoha doesn't need. Her ideology will only lead to Konoha's downfall. She cannot be allowed to live on. What about the brother? He smiled with joy. Her little brother would be traumatized after his dear Kone Chan would be murdered in front of his eyes. Then, I will pick up what's left of him. He'll be a loyal shinobi, wanting nothing more than revenge on Iwagakure. Laughing, such a shame. That girl would have been a power to behold. The snake Sanin didn't say anything because he agreed with the old man, too bad. Still, he liked these kinds of mind games a lot. He put his hands together and licked his lips, he was really excited to see how everything turned out. Hey, Itachi was shocked, how is this possible? He meant to hurt them because his sister had killed that man's family. This anger and desire for vengeance, did it really look that good? Nariko had told him that each day was important, she told him that as a shinobi, he sees himself doing bad things and that there will be results. About keeping the peace and keeping important people safe. He knew what peace was and how hatred can happen again and again. No other way could work than to forgive. He lost his mind when someone grabbed him by the collar and dragged him into another room. He could see his scared sister and the scary man. Force was used to push his body down. Two words the man said stopped him in his tracks. Kill him. He was stuck. His eyes met his sister's wild eyes and looked at each other. Why? Things moved slowly. He could see a kanai shining and sweat running down his brow. There was dust that moved back and forth. As the kanai got closer, it hit. There was silence as he closed his eyes. He let the man go. A strong wind came out of nowhere and blew the enemy nins away. Hey! When Itachi laughed, Nariko lost it. With spinning tomos, the blue turned into a purple with waves. Shinra Tensai. Hey! Itachi was shocked by what he saw. His sister had unlocked their Sharingan, but it wasn't like any other Sharingan. With two tomos in each eye and a purple, wavy surface. What kind of dojo did this look like? Itachi, stay behind me, his sister said in a worried tone. He was spellbound as he watched her lift everyone up, not having hands. They yelled at her and called her horrible names. Nariko had stopped moving because her body was shaking. Itachi was sure she was going to kill them all. He was shocked when she knocked them all out before he could stop her. He was interested. You aren't going to kill them? Nariko took a quick look at him, and her strange eyes seemed to see right through him. She was shaking wildly and her teeth were chattering. He got cold. She had her hands on her chest and shook. I want to Itachi. I want to hurt them so badly for hurting you. I can't even think straight. People make mistakes, oh Tuto. This man only did what he did out of love and hate. If I killed him now, other people would come and kill me, and the cycle would keep going. I'm responsible for everything he did. If I hadn't killed his brother and son, none of this would have happened. She fell to the ground and screamed, it's all my fault. What kind of sister am I? I should have protected you, Itachi hugged her. Nay Chan, he said with a sweet smile. You made a good choice by letting them live. We have to stop this cycle of hatred. Nariko cried and gave him another hug, her brother was too kind. I'm sorry, Itachi, I'm so sorry, hey. Orochimaru could feel his jaws opening wide. One eye next to him grew wide in shock, this came as a complete surprise. But in a good way. Wow, what a wonderful surprise, no one would have thought that a cursed Uchiha would wake up the Rinnegan. Those eyes would be his, they were letting power leak out. You could feel it in the air. He smirked and followed the older person, not sure what to do. Hey, he tensed up when he felt his daughter's strong chakra. The two of them looked shocked at each other. Right away, they ran to where Nariko and Itachi were. Hey, Itachi let out a happy sigh as his sister's healing chakra made its way into his body. His body took her in and made her his own. There, how do you feel oh Tuto? He gave a tired smile and a thank you nod. Better, thank you. He looked her straight in the eyes and saw that her strange dojutsu was still on. What kind of dojutsu is that? 
It's no regular Sheringen. Noriko let out a sigh. It's called the Rinnegan. I'll tell you all about it when we get home. She sat down. Get on my back, you're too tired to walk. So are you. She turned her head away, and stubborn. His cheeks puffed up, and he crawled for his sister. Thirteen bodies that were floating behind them. Lee's go, oh Tuto. I'm kind of hungry, ramen would be good. Itachi dripped with sweat. When things are like this, only his sister would think about food. Hey. Noriko was proud of her dad and couldn't help but admire him. When he found them, he hugged them and Jiraiya and Minato as well. Itachi cuddled up between them while he hugged her. He saw her eyes, but he didn't say anything. She felt better knowing that he cared more about their safety. You have a lot of explaining to do, troublesome child. Itachi laughed softly as she laughed. That's very Nara of you to say that. After ramen, he said it again and laughed, after ramen. Hey. It was hard for Jiraiya to understand. He had another student with the Rinnegan. Was it even possible? Could the Sage of the Six Paths have come back to life twice? Or maybe it was time for a trip to a Megacure to train. He needed answers, and Noriko needed help with how to use her Rinnegan. He would wait until everything was clear first. Hey. Minato didn't understand, he never thought he'd see the ancient Rinnegan in his life. His thoughts were all over the place. That much power in such a little kid. Think about how terrible it would be if the wrong person got their hands on it. Hey. With tears in her eyes, Makoto checked to see if her kids were hurt. Her babies had been taken away, not far away from them. She swallowed and asked, Noriko, what happened to your eyes? Those eyes scared her. Her husband put his hand on her shoulder to make her feel better. Makoto, not now. She gave a shaky nod and looked at her daughter's tiny body with worried eyes. Ka-chan, can Itachi and I sleep with you and Tu-chan tonight? She agreed right away, saying, of course. There was nothing said by Fugaku. Only this time, he would give them what they asked for. Hey. Thank goodness Noriko had used her medical seals to fix the serious wounds. Her mom had only seen some cuts. Since she is pregnant, there's no need to get her worked up. Fugaku agreed with her. She didn't know what happened to the people who had taken her, she also didn't care to know. She was happy and smiled. She hadn't slept between her parents in a very long time. Feel loved and safe. She really wished they could stay that way. Always. Hey. Kai-chan. How do you feel? The man named Uchiha blinked his eyes. I feel better. Noriko put her hand on her brother's cheek and asked, Are you sure? You woke up your Sharingan. He looked her in the eyes and said, Yes, he did feel better. Tu Chan wants to train your Sharingan. In front of him, Fugaku told him that he would help him learn their famous dojutsu. In a sneaky way, Itachi was looking forward to more training. His goal was to get stronger so that the shinobi world would be peaceful. I'm looking forward to it, Nei Chan. This way we'll grow strong together and achieve peace. Noriko hugged her brother and smiled very big, he knew what she meant. Hey. Shisui made a face and poked Noriko in the eyes. She hit him with her finger. Stop that, Baka. They are so weird. The Rinnegan you said? The user of Rinnegan said, yes. Obito asked with worry, will you ever have the normal Sharingan then? The color purple turned red when she said, I do have the Sharingan. Shisui looked impressed, but Obito was being grumpy. The cerulean blue came back when she blinked her eyes. He should have congratulated her since he was her best friend. He smiled big and put his arm around her shoulder. You beat me, Ko-chan. Maybe with your Ringan? Shisui corrected, Rinnegan. But Obito didn't pay attention to him. We'll be able to destroy Bakashi. Shisui dripped with sweat. Is that all you ever think of? Of course. After Bakashi's defeat, Rin will have to acknowledge that I'm better than the bastard. Noriko's face turned softer. In order to protect this, she did. While they squeaked with shame and their cheeks turned red, she pulled them into a tight hug. Hey. The chair was almost broken in half by Fugaku. Say what? This is necessary for her. She will have to learn using the Rinnega. This trip will be efficient for her. Hiruzen rubbed his forehead. All the arguments about Noriko made Fugaku go crazy. Minato was laughing sheepishly next to him, trying to calm things down. 
How are you even going to train her in the use of the Rinnegan if you don't have knowledge on it yourself? Here is and let out another sigh, they wouldn't get anywhere with this. In the end, Jiraiya did not give up. I have another student of mine who has the same eyes as Nariko. The other three people inside froze. Another one with the Rinnegan? He let out a breath and said, impossible. Hiruzen shut his eyes. Then it's decided. Jiraiya, you will take Nariko to this student of yours and train her in the use of the Rinnegan. The toad sage was happy about his win and smiled. He shook his head and said, but, Sandame sama if, Fugaku, I know you're worried about your daughter and that you want to train her. As if now, Jiraiya has access to a more direct approach. Furthermore, he is perfectly capable of protecting her as I have taught him. Are you doubting my teaching methods? He shook his head and said he had lost. Fugaku, don't be so gloomy. It will do your daughter some good as well. She needs some time out. Minato was calm. The head of the Uchiha clan had an eyebrow raise. He wasn't being sad. Hey. Jiraiya and Nariko were on their way to the gate of Konoha. She could see all of her important people waiting there. She ran toward them with a big smile. Wait brat, don't go running off on me. No one listened to Jiraiya's complaint. Her father spoke up and said, Nariko, I know you will make us proud. Her mother gave her a loving look. Itachi spoke up, his eyes wide with determination. We'll wait for your return, Nei Chan. Until then, I'll be training too. She put out her fist at him. We'll become strong together, O oh Tuto. He smacked her with his fist. Shisui added, hey, don't forget about us. Obito smiled, we'll be training too. When you get back, I'll kick your ass, Ko-chan. I'm counting on it, guys, Nariko said with her arms crossed and her lips pursed. Rin and Kashina gave her a hug and wished her a safe trip. As Minato rubbed her head, stay safe, Ko-chan. I will, Minato Oji. She sighed with sadness when she didn't see any Junin with silver hair. Obito pushed her to the side and wagged his left hand. Huh? She stopped when she saw his finger. Kakashi, you came. He turned his face to the side and blushed. Don't think this will change anything. Minato-sensei forced me to come. She softened her look and pulled the tough teen toward her. Arigato. A lot of the Uzumakis had joined in the kisses and hugs. Before she got there, Sotsune-sensei gave her Fuinjutsu scrolls to learn. Jiraiya and Nariko left after everyone had a chance to hug and kiss each other. She didn't turn around because she knew they would be there soon, before her brother was born, Sasuke. Hey, nay, sensei, can you teach me a jutsu? He could feel a vein or two pop up. Pretty please? Nariko asked again, making the most of the way cute she looked. She didn't want to say it, but this body would get hotter over time than the last one. No. But why? Jiraiya pulled on his white hair because she was mad at her smart student. Because you have already learned 15 jutsus in the span of 2 hours. And if this keeps going on then I won't have any jutsus left to teach you by the end of the day. Nariko let out a frustrated sigh. It wasn't her fault that she knew most of those moves already. She was reborn or traveled through time. But what am I supposed to do then? He waved her off and wrote in his book with a twisted smile. Do what kids do, play or scream. Choose whichever you want to. She moaned. Did she really need to use those methods again? She sighed and crossed her fingers in the ram seal. Huh? What are you going? Oiroke no jutsu. When the smoke cleared, a beautiful angelic woman was seen performing a seductive move. Nariko smiled seductively and put her body over Jiraiya's. Jiraiya sensei, won't you teach me a jutsu or two? I promise I'll be a good girl. The toad Sanin looked at her newly made jutsu with hearts in his eyes. His eyes got as big as saucers, and blood started leaking from his nose, ew. One that is even better than her change into a she-devil. Of course the opposite is true. She looked like a sweet angel, with a cute halo on her head and wings on her back. As he looked at her from different angles, drool ran from his mouth. This is perfect for my new book. Jiraiya gave a head nod. All right. I'll teach you more jutsus if you stay like that. Nariko tried not to squeal. It's a tie. Hey. Jiraiya gave Nariko a sexy grin while she practiced the hair needle senbon, a technique in which one's hair was used as a shooting senbon. You need more bounce in your jutsu, Nariko-chan. 
That girl rolled her eyes. What an A asterisk hole. But she still wouldn't have it. On top of that, she was a pervert too, because she was so shady, Obito didn't like her either. Hey, sensei, are we there yet? Nariko asked with a frown. For the hundredth time, we're almost there. She sighed at his answer that kept coming back. She was so bored that she pulled out a notebook and began scribbling madly on it. Jiraiya shut his eyes and looked at his student. He wasn't used to the silence. What are you writing? The Uchiha with the blue eyes smiled happily. Oh, you'll find out soon enough. Scary. Nariko laughed to herself in her mind. Sage, that jerk, would not know what hit him. Hey. I'm bored. It made Jiraiya roll his eyes. Stop overreacting, brat. She stuck out her tongue and said, childish as well. Peefed, like you have any right to say that. On his forehead, a vein popped. Stop disrespecting your elders. Nariko didn't pay attention to him and kept writing in her notebook. Then, she tried to be as hip and cool as Kakashi and said, Huh? You said something? You used to be so cute and obedient in the beginning. What happened to my kohai? Jiraiya asked through anime tears. Life happened, she said. Her sensei did nothing but stare at her and mutter something. Hey. As soon as Jiraiya got to the meeting between Hanzo and the AIM orphans, he was in a very tough spot. It looked like Conan was being held hostage to him, and his other two students were looking at him with horrified faces. He was shocked to see Konoha's own Anbu and Danzo as well. What in the name of the sage is going on here? Nariko looked pale. Sensei, we have to help out that girl. Jiraiya breathed in and out through his nose to call Fukasaku and Shima. I'll need more power to do this. Fukasaku asked, Jiraiya boy, why have you called us? Shiam yelled, we're going to be late for dinner. He could use Senjutsu with the help of the two great sage toads because he was one of the legendary Sanin. I need your help to rescue my students. They said yes and began gathering energy from nature. Soon, Jiraiya's body changed so that it looked more like a toad's. He looked at Nariko and nodded to her. Let's go Nariko. Hi. Hey. The two AIM orphans and Nariko came to a stop next to each other. Yo. Yahiko looked at her with a shocked expression. Nagato made a face. A child? I'm also Jiraiya Sensei's student. Nice to meet you, we're here to help you out. The eyes of both Yahiko and Nagato got really big. Sensei is here? He's going to save Conan. Before you could say anything else, Jiraiya showed up. He showed up in front of Hanzo very quickly and punched him in the gut. The Omega Cure leader spat blood and was thrown away. After Conan was saved, he went to fight the other AIM ninjas. Nariko yelled, Yada! Go Sensei! Nagato let out a breath and said, Amazing! No wonder he was crazy about frogs and toads, Yahiko said with a sweaty face. To his surprise, more Akatsuki members showed up, calling out, Debutsu! K! Kyusuke! The three gave their leader a respectful nod. Kyusuke said, I heard that a group of Konoha ninjas have appeared and I came to inform you but it seems our help was unnecessary. Konoha's ninja were afraid to attack the Toad Sanin, so they ran away, betraying Hanzo. Just as soon as Danzo saw Jiraiya, he was gone. Let's go help Jiraiya Sensei, Nariko said with a smirk. What a twist. Nariko laughed at the thought of fighting with Akatsuki. Hey, in the end, Hanzo couldn't beat a Sanin, two Rinnegan users, or any of the other Akatsuki members. You will all be sorry for this humiliation, Hanzo said before he disappeared. A lot of fun for the Akatsuki was Nariko's victory dance. No one but her would ever know what kind of disaster they stopped. She would make sure that no one ever found out her secret. I will continue the story in next part till then we weave offline.